Hidden beneath the trees of Sintra, Portugal, is a mysterious private garden that was under lock and key for most of the last century. But since its rediscovery, different theories of what it was used for have surfaced. And as local guide Matilde Almesh knows, with this place, there's always more than first meets the eye. There's always something new to, to discover, um, a surprise in every corner, a cave or a tunnel or something dark that uh, I didn't see before. There's pathways that lead to nowhere. You turn the corner, there's a huge tower. The whole thing feels very surreal, as though it's a dream sequence from a movie. The theatrics of this environment were no mistake. Everything here came straight from the imagination of this site's two creators, both with something to prove. It was built by a wealthy man called Antonio Augusto Carvalho Monteiro. Carvalho Monteiro was the heir of a huge fortune. Montero worked with an Italian architect and stage designer named Luigi Manini. Well, Manini must have felt like this was the ultimate. He had a client with unlimited amounts of money who wanted to build some of the craziest, most fanciful, most delightful stuff ever created. Born from the melding of these two minds, this masterpiece of curiosity was completed in 1910 and the result was something entirely unique. You see a, a promenade of statues of Greek and Roman gods. You see a chapel. You see a waterfall with stepping stones. Everywhere you turn, you see a different fantastical element borrowed from history with no real rhyme or reason for how it all hangs together. Dramatic, baffling, and intriguing, the route through the garden continues towards an unusual rock structure, which seems to reveal the true purpose of this site. It's known as the initiation well. The well is almost like an optical illusion. It's like looking at a medieval tower in reverse. Instead of rising up into the sky, it's a staircase that spirals down into the earth. This spiraling descent into darkness makes it apparent this is all part of a journey. But to where? We are at the top of this structure and we need to go down the nine levels. Uh, and the idea is for us to find the darkness down there. You don't really know what you are going to find down there. You don't know if you need to go up or if you have an exit. This is a test uh, to make you uh, feel the right way, to make you listen to your instincts, listen to yourself. Part of the really interesting symbolism is the fact that there's nine levels to the initiation well, the journey itself. And the number nine is reminiscent of Dante's Inferno, of Dante's Hell. So it's almost a symbolic journey to hell and back. The symbols and references appear to obscure the meaning of this journey. But then one sign starts to unlock the mystery. Okay, so we end down the nine circles into the darkness and we find a clue here on the floor. At first, it seems an eight-pointed star, but it is a compass. As you continue to look at the compass, another major shape jumps out at you. It's a large cross. We believe it is a Knights Templar's cross, and this can be related to some initiation rites or the idea of initiation rituals. The Knights Templar were a powerful religious order in the Middle Ages, known for their secret initiation ceremonies. So that reference suggests this is linked to a similar ritual. It seems as if Montero and Manini, they wanted their visitors to rely on their senses. As you walk through the tunnel, you can't really see anything. So you have to use your hearing to direct you. Initiation 
usually involves journey. And if you go back to some of the earliest initiatory cults, there were physical journeys through tunnels into different spaces with different experiences. And here, one gets the sense that a similar journey might be being laid out for the visitor. Any visitor brave enough to venture toward the sound of the water is eventually rewarded by coming out in this lovely garden scene with its waterfall. While the journey of self-discovery and enlightenment seems to be part of Montero's intentions, if it was meant for an initiation, then into which group remains unclear? Everywhere you look, there's this wild mishmash of symbolism. You have pagan symbols, tarot. You have symbols that are associated with the Knights Templar, even Greek and Roman gods. But finally, as the journey through the garden draws to a close, the answer to what it's all about suddenly seems to appear up ahead. So you find yourself at the end in this chapel, this apparent house of God, and you think, all right, this is it. This is where I'm supposed to finish my journey. It's all about God. Or perhaps, once again, the real meaning isn't so clear. This is no, no ordinary chapel. Uh, it's full of symbols that can have different meanings. One of the symbols you notice right away is the all-seeing eye. Now, of course, that's a sonic symbol that says the eye of God is always watching. But there is another interpretation of what this could be linked to. The rope around it, a reference to the Freemasonry, or a reference to the Portuguese discoveries in the 16th century, representing the vessels. While the Freemasons are known for their initiation ceremonies and their use of the symbol of a rope or tow line, the alternative maritime use of ropes could be the key to what Montero was really up to. It may, of course, have nothing to do with initiation at all. At the time it was built, Portugal was going through many changes. Those could have been felt as very unstable times by someone like the builder of this place. And he may well have been trying to hark back to a time when things felt a little more certain, when Portugal was a stronger, more international country. This may simply be a reaffirmation of the solidity of the Portugal he remembered rather than anything remotely arcane. Following the assassination of the Portuguese king in 1908, the old order was being ripped up. For an aging, wealthy monarchist like Montero, perhaps this was his own elaborate but private tribute to a lost world. He tried to represent here his ideals, his beliefs. That is why when we walk around the garden and we, when we visit the chapel and the palace, it's like to take a glimpse into Carvalho Monteiro's mind. Following Monteiro's death in 1920, the house and gardens were sold, and the initiation well forgotten about for the next 75 years. This appears to be an initiation center, but guess what? We might be wrong. Montero, he never wrote it down, but what we do know, its real purpose, he's taking it to the grave.